Planning Board meeting, April 5th, 2018. We all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Master Plan Review Phase 1 for Scarborough Downs, Accessory Map R52, Lot 4. I'd like to note at this time that we have uh, Susan Augers as a voting member this evening. And I'll pass uh, Jenny, if you'd like to take a primer on this for us. Sure. Uh, I'll just kick it off real briefly as this is sort of a continuation of a previous meeting the board had some weeks ago, maybe a month ago, um, on the first phase master plan for the, uh, for the Scarborough Downs project. Um, as a reminder, um, this is the master plan for phase one. So the zoning, the Crossroad Plan Development District has a very measured and stepped approach to review um, and approval for certain projects. And this board went through the first phase of the, doing the preliminary infrastructure plan back uh, in the winter time. And now the outcome is before you for their master plan of the first phase of development. So as part of the master plan review process, there are standards that are laid out in section 7E of the ordinance, as well as in the um, crossroad plan development uh, section of the ordinance. I think as board members may recall, last time we went through a series of these, and the board members uh, principally had questions really around trying to one of the items that the board is to do as part of the master plan is to, to um, determine the space and bulk standards, the allowable space and bulk standards, such as lot size, frontage, coverage, those sorts of, sorts of things. And the applicant has uh, proposed uh, space and bulk standards for your consideration, but board members wanted a little more information about really what that was going to look like, both in terms of the lot layout but I think also in terms of um, uh, architecture and uh, development design standards. And so you know, the applicants work to provide some additional materials there. Um, there's a host of other elements that staff standards, uh, I mean staff memo sort of walks through, um, but as staff really recalls, those were sort of the principal elements that the board wanted more information on moving forward. So with that, I would uh, sort of and staff's presentation. I'll turn it back to you. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. Thank you uh, very much for having us here tonight and to, to meet uh, on a Thursday night. I think you're going to find it's very helpful uh, to be able to go through the details that, that we have to present to you tonight. Uh, I have Dan and uh, Nick here with a, a pretty nice presentation, and I think we ought to cut to the chase and get started with uh, Dan's piece to start with. Um, and thanks for having us again. Uh, we've been busy since our last meeting in, in early March, really kind of getting at what um, Jay outlined, kind of fine-tuning uh, the design of phase one, getting into some more details on really the kind of look, the feel, the character of this development project. So we're going to kind of jump right in and, and um, get into those details. Um, and as was introduced, we just first want to start with context. And as you, I'm sure you recall from earlier in the year, this is the conceptual infrastructure plan that was approved by the board in January. It's very high level. And, we up, um, and we're, we're really zoomed in on that lower quadrant of one one. So that's what we're talking about tonight. Um, phase one, master plan review, really from move one up um, just south of where the site opens up to the grandstands, uh, the core of the site. We reviewed this in detail with you uh, in March, and it's in your package's uh, original submission. Uh, what the master plan process expects is um, a site inventory that outlines really the natural conditions and conditions of the area that we're proposing development. So it shows land, 
uh, vegetative cover on the left, um, the soils in this area, the drainage patterns in this area, um, the infrastructure and utilities that serve the area around uh, this part of the project, principally along Route 1 um, and in the business park, technology lake. There is limited uh, infrastructure and utilities that, that serve the uh, existing down site. Um, and limited in terms of its ability to, to serve the development. And the last uh, image on the right is highlighting in yellow the, the upland areas, the areas appropriate for development. The green are the wetland areas. It's mapped, delineated by our wetland scientists. The blue uh, band is the stream corridor from Millbrook. on this edge here. Um, and then these orange areas are, are uplands, but they're uh, isolated from the rest of the site to the wetlands and the So since our presentation in March, we focused on updating the phase one infrastructure plan. Um, again, it's fairly high level. This is an iterative process. We're learning and learning as well in terms of the specific utility layouts. Um, but this image here is a proposal for generally how phase one would be served by, by utilities. So sewer would actually be served by technology way, right? the sewer system that's in the enterprise park yeah. The sewer is in the can be served this part of the area from the connection to come right here. And we're thinking about a connection here to serve this part of the development. We anticipate um, a water line being extended up to move one to serve this entire uh, phase one. We also anticipate electric coming up from from move one and creating a really the backbone of um, electric service through the site, and that will continue on to the core of the site. Um, and then there will be services that would come off of that to serve things and cause the development. Um, in addition, uh, natural gas would be would come off of the technology way right now um, to provide gas utilities to this phase. And also we're looking at we're looking into fiber optic service um, and running the conduit that provides for a high level of communication and fiber at the recommendation of Karen Martin. Working on that. This over here is an update to the master plan. <coughs> a bit more just in the inversion. And there's some, some specific changes we've made since um, early March. We've looked more closely at the layout of this uh, residential pod, and are, instead of two dead ends, we're proposing this to be a loot interconnected street as recommended by the board and as called for. In the, in the zoning. So that's been, that's been adjusted. Um, we've kind of bolstered our buffer to, um, to the east. The zone requires a 100 foot buffer to abutting residential districts. So that's been highlighted more prominently here. Um, we also are planning on a pretty significant buffer to Enterprise Business Park. There's right now and mature trees that um, we think are important for kind of buffering technology play from our project and vice versa. And um, so we're focusing on and keeping as many of those as possible to keep that kind of green corridor on the, on the west side of the main project. Um, and those are some of the highlights of things that have changed uh, since our last meeting in terms of details of this master plan, we'll get into more details, but the thinking is that this is very much a mixed residential project with some light commercial uses possible. Uh, so in terms of specific uses in these areas, we're thinking this is a um, single family residential area here. We're laying out, and you'll see much more details later about this. Um, this is a multi-family pod. We're looking at this as a mixture of um, garden 
condos along the Downs Road. So eight unit buildings here. Um, single story duplexes here, or kind of cottage style duplexes along this loop road. We're talking about the memory care uh, group that's very interested in the project and kind of fitting into the neighborhood in this location. And in this area, I uh, don't have too many details on that yet, but we're anticipating it could be a, a mixed use area where there could be some commercial and residential together. I think another one of the staff comments that came up the last time we were together was whether or not to create a four-way intersection here with a potential connection to, to technology way. We've looked at this a number of different ways, um, and it really lays out in a, a much better way, and you'll see pictures and video footage later, for a multifamily kind of compact neighborhood here with a green that really isn't possible for the road coming through the middle of it. Um, so, we instead offset these roadways um, over 150 feet, which would be good, good practice and minimum standards in terms of uh, roadway separation. Um, while there will be some cross traffic and some use here, we don't see it as a high volume connection, so we think that separation um, is appropriate. Um, I think down the road, a uh, vehicular connection and connection. Okay. We're showing a sidewalk connection that can line right up coming out of a multi family um, neighborhood here. So, um, but vehicular connection is a for down the road. Right now, it's, it's, a, it's a rough day in gravel. Yeah. So, getting into more detail, um, as requested by the board and at this stage, uh, we looked a lot at you know, the design of the streets, really to, to have them be complete streets, to be safe, comfortable, multimodal. You know, walk, our goal with this whole project is to be walkable, to be bikeable, to be comfortable, uh, safe, to have slower travel speeds, etc. So this image here shows our current concept of the layout of, of phase one. Um, and in, in blue here, that's the down throat um, that we're just talking about, and then these, these internal streets. And these are the different street cross sections we're thinking about for So, for the down throat, you know, we're anticipating this to be 11 to 12 foot travel lanes to have um, generous bike lanes um, for the bikers. Along, along the, the length of the road. Um, in places, we're anticipating some on-street parking, particularly where there's um, the dwelling units and multifamily or condos up close to the street. We're anticipating the buildings to engage with the street, to be of the village character, of a kind of more urban um, or village context. Um, mentioned for the buffer to enterprise over here. So you see this is being a healthy buffer and then having an esplanade and sidewalk that's going to vary from six to eight feet depending on the section of the down road. Um, in front of the condos, it could, might be a bit narrower, but leading up towards the rest of the project, we anticipate a six or eight foot wide path that is not just walkers but for bikers uh, and <coughs> joggers, folks heading up to what we hope to be kind of the center of the community. <coughs> Actually, what they have, that's not. You mean 
what's, what's existing and what might be proposed. Yeah, this, right. is a, this, is, this is very nice. But how, many, how, how dense is it really going to be? Right. When you get a drawing, it doesn't tell me much. Yeah. So as long as you're in the back, I'll wait. We don't touch on that. And the surrounding trees are the, the open space, the wetland areas that are going to be conserved. Um, and we can touch on the, the landscaping plans later on here and also later on in the process. Roger, did you have a question? Yeah, yeah. Um, on the balance floor, uh, are you going to be thinking of putting in any kind of maybe roundabouts or anything like that to as travel time to any degree? Because it, it, it appears to me if it's going to be straight, it's going to be a straight run to the I can see people just running right. through there pretty fast. You know? We are in this section of the Downs Road from Route 1 through this phase. Uh, we're anticipating right as you come in off of Route 1 to actually have a landscaped median. So that would be planted with, with shade trees in the middle of both lanes, and then on both sides there would be, there would be trees. That helps provide traffic coming. As you come into the section here, okay. um, there's going to be on-street parking that, that also helps with the traffic coming. And then right beyond, and we don't have details of this at this point, but right beyond where phase one ends and transitions towards the rest of the property. The road is actually going to bend right? because this alignment doesn't follow the current oh, yeah, alignment see, yeah. exactly. Yeah, um, it actually shifts a little bit towards Enterprise. Yeah. So coming in, there's going to be a bit of a bend more than there's today. And then there's going to be a bend back to the current alignment after you get to the project. So we think the combination of those things are really going to get at slowing common traffic, particularly coming into and out of this. I'm just thinking if you're going to, and I, I understand you're going to have the uh, structures close to the road, and then if you're going to have flat vehicles right there too, uh, you potentially could be dangerous if there's some kids or something, right? You know, um, especially, and that's going to be, I mean, people come through there already, and it's not a good road. <laughs> so. so we're... We've been thinking a lot about that, and we're intentionally kind of trying to keep this section of the road wide enough to serve the traffic it's going to need, but narrow enough to, to calm traffic. And our street parking helps with that. And right now, the Downs Road is it can lead it pretty incredibly <laughs> wide, so it's, it's not going to resemble you know, what you experience. So you're basically talking about the Downs Road being similar to uh, Scarborough Gallery? In places, yeah, that type of yeah. uh, approach as you come in. Leave this area. Yeah. Yeah, Dan, um, in terms of the coming traffic, when, where you start on street parking, are you thinking about having some sort of bump outs? Yeah, there would be. So that that also then would calm traffic when they see those and the, there's parking on the other side of them. Is that exactly, yeah. There okay. would be bookends or bump outs at both ends of the run of on street parking. That would be landscaped. Yeah. Okay, and then that will. That will slow folks down when they see that as well. Yeah. I think you'll enjoy a later piece of this that I'll kind of explain. will explain, it. explain this. Um, but I think it'll help with understanding that. And so the lower image here and is a similar cross section, but this is for the more of the internal streets, the neighborhood streets. Um, and we're proposing a 22 foot wide roads in this setting where there will be 11 foot lanes. Um, esplanades, so six to eight foot wide, planted esplanades, um, and then sidewalks on one or both sides, depending on uh, the area. Uh, okay. Uh, what arrangements do you have um, for parking on the, um, you know, the local streets? There's a few select areas that we're looking at on street parking, not, not in a uh, comprehensive way, but there's the memory care. They have some on street parking for guests. Um, the multifamily may have some on street parking also for guests. Well, I was just down in Florida, and I was close to some of the people trying to do the issues. And they had to do once in a while. But they did have it every once in a while. They had sections where they would do visitors with rent pot. So they would probably have a dozen cars at the moment. Which I thought was a good idea. Still images that, that help um, show what we're talking about, show these perspectives. This is the 
concept for the um, single family portion of, of the one and two plates. Oh, sorry. Similar to the same thing. Oh, um, that is, sorry, they are such good. Sorry. So this shows, again, a 22 foot wide road, um, the esplanades, the street trees, sidewalks, and buildings relatively close to the street. We're going to talk more about that, but it's intentional to have um, front porches in the buildings address the street, address the, the public space, and then have private space. Again, this is a single family image. And there's another highlight of this, but uh, we're showing an island actually in a few different places through the single family neighborhood. Um, and it has multiple purposes that we'll kind of get into in a little bit. This is an area here coming into a portion of the project that perhaps a memory care facility, since that's this building here, uh, would occur. And that's that showing some on street parking for their guests. Again, this is a gateway into the neighborhood, so I can help calm traffic. Can I get you to jump back on the slide? Yeah. I just want to make one point. <coughs> and I know we're not, uh, you know, we're not really getting into the really the details on the layout and everything, but we envision this section to be private way, private street. We envision this to be a public street, and then of course this in the apartments would be private. So, kind of, you know, public way here, private, private. Well, this this primary this is a condominium project, oh, okay. and so you know traditionally they would they would own all of you know all of those streets and, and uh, common areas and whatnot. Okay. Okay. Um, it, it, as I said, it's, it's traditional. It's you know it's going to help us with the town side of the ROI. Frankly, uh, if the town you know doesn't have to own and maintain the, this section, so uh, it just seemed to, to make sense. Whereas this is more of a traditional subdivision. And again, we'll, we'll get into this as we get into the details of subdivision and, and whatnot, but I just thought that that should, should try to make that clear. Dan, I got a quick question. I yes. Know. You know, we're we'll we jumping ahead a little bit. Yeah. This is, um, are you going to do street lighting in these areas, or do you propose that since the houses are that close to the walkway, is that? Street light should be we anticipate some street lighting. We haven't gotten that far in terms of detailing of that and spacing and what that looks like, but we're in places certainly. Yeah. 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 So, so, in addition to the kind of the street network and, and walkability and bikeability and auto traffic on the streets, we've been looking at and thinking a lot about sort of pathways and trails and kind of engaging the neighborhood with the, the open space. Um, and there's at least 40% of this of this phase is open space, those trees that you're kind of referring to, excuse me, earlier. Um, and so we spent a lot of time figuring out trail alignments to connect the two neighborhoods um, and kind of design plans. And not only connecting the neighborhoods, but also engaging with future phases of the project, engaging with the state property that's to the east. Um, there's conservation land that actually ties that out to Sawyer Road and to the town campus, municipal campus where we are. So it's hard to see from your seats. Um, these lighter yellow lines are kind of a mix of more kind of structured sidewalk improvements here, but then the trail connections the project from one, from one area to the next. Um, and they also include some kind of pocket parks that we'll show you in a little bit. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Dan, if the, if the condo is a private road and the other street is a public street and you're going to have trails connecting them, is there going to be some sort of uh, information on a deed that says people can walk through the private areas? Or yes, the answer is yes. So we okay. envision that there'll be a master association for the whole project that will own and maintain a lot of this trail system. Uh, All right, and the model of Reston, which yep. has so the lay of home. Okay. There'll be, there'll be uh, you know, legal documents put in place so that this can be maintained, can, can be made, and that the public can access the trail system. Okay. All right. 
So up at the top of the screen, you know, Nick has spent a lot of time sort of thinking about materials, thinking about sort of the character of these pathways, and we're anticipating, given that some of these areas are wetlands, and wanting to be sensitive to, to crossing wetlands, that there's going to be some uh, boardwalks in addition to um, more natural paths. So we have details on that, but that's what these two different dimensions are showing, is how to treat those walkways based on the landscape. Um, and this is an area here that we sort of talked about that is not only for traffic common reasons, but it's really been highlighting this pedestrian crosswalk and linkage trail from one open space to the next and on to, to other parts of the neighborhood and this common area. It's right up here. here, and then the same kind of treatment up in this area. Um, and later we'll kind of get into what these details are. But this image here is showing a, rep a representation of uh, what this area could be, um, where it's, it's actually a kind of a pocket park neighborhood that, excuse me, green space behind the neighborhood, behind the houses, um, kind of tying into this, this greenway. So you cross here and walk through the woods and end up on, on this pathway that brings you back out to the street. That lawn area is going to be that blank open space on the front door. Is that what you're saying? So that's going to be the landscape? Yeah. We envision it to have some active area yeah, where people can be out. And, oh, okay. and part of this project is these are these are small lots. Yeah. Um, and it's a more compact yeah. neighborhood. So to compensate for that, to balance with that, we want to provide these other areas for people to to have some additional space to, to gather um, and also to get off into the, the more natural areas of the project. <coughs> so one of the things that we talked about at the last meeting is getting more of a sense for the different unit types, um, beginning to look at kind of form, character, um, and as I introduced earlier, thinking about a range of different residential housing types, um, thinking about some multifamily, uh, three stories such as this, thinking about uh, a unit, a two story, uh, condo and a garden, a condo such as this. We're also looking at more of the duplex cottages, single story living, uh, with garages like this. Uh, and then more kind of traditional single family homes. This last image is concept for a, a memory care facility. And it's of the scale that fits a neighborhood. So it's you know, 12 bed slash room facility. It's single story or one and a half stories. It's not, you know, it's, it's not a larger facility that sometimes they, um, they're programmed as. This is something that we think fits really, fits really nicely and they want to be part of the neighborhood. Um, so the common spaces, the trails are really important to them as well for use um, and to engage with the neighborhood. Again, I'm not sure there's like time, but <clears throat> I can see it generally what you're showing me here, the relative size of various types of housing. Um, <clears throat> the problem, the architecture is, there's a lot to be desired. And I anticipate that we're going to spend quite a bit of time on that when it comes around. Tonight. That's one of the other things. Because we're going to be having some really nice landscaping, some really nice property, but we want the buildings to be quite special. This doesn't do it except for memory here. That's right there. Anyway. We're at a stage that this is our level of ability to generate architecture. We, have, we don't have architectural plans yet, so I think you'll see later on. The use of this is a preliminary stage where these aren't sort of uh, well, that's what I think architectural doing. renderings. These are used through different software systems. So it's it, be an idea of the size of yeah. the things, which is what I'm looking for. We're trying to, trying to talk about the mass and yeah. bulk and yeah. relationships. Could I just ask, the single family and the, um, the single story condos, how, what size, what footprint are we talking? Uh, the duplex condos are going to be right around 1,500 square feet. 
uh, each, each side? Unit, each side. Okay. Uh, each side. Some units will have a one-car garage, some will have a two-car garage, and that's more about space where it all fits. Um, the houses are going to be in the 13 to maybe as high as 1,800 square feet, uh, depending on if all the garage is finished and the third floor is finished. Um, most of the houses will be able to have a two-car garage. We have a few that maybe won't, but uh, might have to have one car or only size one car. But um, that's just kind of a but, but what you're looking at, this is what, what we've been talking about in terms of workforce housing, and that's... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's not a great big, you know, huge 3,000 square foot houses. We don't, those just don't, don't, don't fit here. Yep. So and as Nick was saying, we're going to show a little bit later, this is more about size, scale, massing, some key architectural features being front porches and having a huge way to street. Um, and this kind of gets into it as well. So, I'm pivoting from you know, types of units to how it applies to the plan. Um, over here is you know, the, the beginnings of our sketch plan for this phase. Then we really needed to progress this enough to get you the material you wanted to see to a sketch plan level. You know, so, sort of, we're moving. We're in between master plan and subdivision right now with kind of our plan development. So that's what this, this is showing over here to kind of give a sense for um, building orientation, lot sizes, uh, building sizes. And you know, this is representing how we see the single family homes uh, in the industry. Having front porches being oriented towards the sidewalk, being close to the right of way. Um, having minimal setbacks to the right of way, having you know, backyard space, which you can't see in this image, um, sort of active, active front yards. Uh, this is showing a trail uh, that goes back to the trail system we talked about earlier. And you, know, you can kind of design this right and, and to have the buildings and lots fit in. Um, that's why we're, we're asking the board for five yard setbacks so that um, five foot side yard setbacks. <laughs> five yards, no problem. <laughs> so you're not gonna have any um cowboy ways or things like that in the second group. We're not we're not in the, the single family section. We are gonna have kind of a it's a driveway slash alley for some of the other units. Um, but in this area we've gone away from alleys for the single family in favor of that that trail system, sure. and sort of that um, that open space to the rear, and so um, you know, this is showing again more like a, a five foot setback to the property line to enable that trail. Um, we've been working with the fire department on side yard setbacks for for fire safety reasons, and he's comfortable with ten foot separations between units, so that you know, five foot setback enables that that minimum separation. It won't always be the case, um, but we've been laying it out so that it's possible uh, on, on many lots. This image down here shows the, um, the duplex cottage program. Um, again, buildings close to the street. We've been thinking a lot about having kind of front stoops, front porches, closer to the street, closer to the sidewalk, um, recessing the garages to the extent that we can so that they're, they're back from And from the, the single family, are there sidewalks on both sides of the street? I noticed with the condos, the sidewalks are only on one side. Single family, they're, they're on both sides. Okay. Yeah. The, um, are you talking uh, a lot of developments that I've seen where they have their homes close to the street? They, they have porches on the front to try and entice more neighbors. Theme kind of throughout. Um, there may not be part, front porches along the full but the front facade, but it could be the full facade front porch. It could be, you want to vary the architecture as well. Um, so it could be a partial front porch or a stoop. Um, these are, if you don't mind, if I could just sort of jump out to that question. Have you thought about sort of a, a minimum or maximum type of depth of the porch? 
sometimes you can sort of see some porches that are you can barely fit a chair on, or you know, so just something to be thinking about for later stages. Is sure. so it's functional. Yeah, so it's functional, right? Okay. So I don't know what the right answer is, but just right. wonder if you're thinking about it along those lines. I don't know the board members are interested in that, but yeah. oh yeah. So these are, again, similar images that illustrate our goal for having buildings closer to the street, minimal setback to the street um, for those reasons that were stated. And again, another illustration, this shows the sidewalks on both sides, the esplanade, and the single family portion of the project. About how far is that setback? We're proposing a zero setback be allowed. Um, I don't think it'll be used. Um, Which would put it right next to the sidewalk, is that? Well, the right of way often will be behind the sidewalk by a few feet. So, I mean, I think this is probably showing more of a 10 to 12 foot distance from the sidewalk to the porch, I mean 10 to 15. Um, it's also going to vary as to constraints to the rear. You know, sometimes there's a weapon area we want to buffer as well. Um, so we're not at that sort of level of detail of placing each home, but we're anticipating single family homes probably in that 10 foot. Mm -hmm. 10 to 15. Yeah. So, but, but perhaps some variety when you look down the street so you're not seeing just a you know, straight line. But And there's some right. examples of in other communities where they've used, you know, some they allowed some encroachment of, say, the front porch or some yeah, portions I, of the projections. I, I, I did a lot of research yeah. online on this, yeah. so I, I saw that, yeah. Yep. So that could be something that we talk about later as well. Okay. So do we have to do um, the fencing and the stonework and everything? Is that going to be part of the whole? We're going to show a bit more detail on this um, through the, right. the fly-through, but... Your intentions are actually do something like that. Yeah, I mean, this is showing a piece of a, uh, a common space that's been actually behind some units in one area. And we've been thinking a lot about kind of delineating private and public space. And that white picket fence is, is that delineation where this is actually you know, a resident's backyard. Um, and there would be a gate. And this is the common space for that whole part of the neighborhood. Yeah, I think Nick's come up with a great idea on how to handle that, you know, that demarcation of public-private. And that's what you see kind of in the condominium here a little bit. Yeah, you can see as, as, as we get more compact in these compact spaces that you almost need some delineation between the public and private space to, to make these rooms, right? And you can almost picture that space if, you know, if you were to take away the fence or the, the wall or some of the planting, you know, it might feel a little bit less comfortable. You know, as an aside, you know there's a place in Massachusetts that they could actually take those stone walls all together and then we're getting it. You didn't know that. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that on my soul phone. It's interesting. They bring it in like 24 seconds. Hmm. It's real stone? Yeah. Wow. They put the foundation and they they build the wall in the back. Let's not have those hands. Get rid of some trees, too. Construction <laughs> trees. <laughs> Zooming back out to the plan view, you know, we're talking about small lots, um, and we don't anticipate necessarily you know, 2,500 square foot minimum lots uh, or many of them. Um, but we included that because there's, there could be some opportunity for those duplexes to actually be individual lots. We may not go that direction in this phase. We've been talking about that, but in order to have that kind of compact character. Having that allowance, uh, we think, is appropriate here. At least most of the single-family lots we've been laying out in around the 5,000 5, square foot range, 5,000 to 7,000 square feet. Um, and that's just a snapshot of, of that type of density. Um, this is a snapshot of the, the duplex cottage area. We were just actually kind of looking at an area here where a duplex backyard is in, you know, integrated and talked to the 
and then this is a, a blow up of a multifamily area. And these buildings are intentionally going to be close to the street um, to kind of create that, that streetscape that we desire kind of coming in and down the road and have the Esplanade and the on street parking. So this helps in plan view you illustrate uh, the thoughts behind the space involved that's being proposed. And we've run numbers on how this relates to development coverage, and we're comfortable with how the plan complying with the zoning standard of the 75% max development coverage, and don't think that we'll be, in many places, we're going to be you know, close to that. Um, and others, we're comfortable with meeting that overarching standard in the zone. Um, I think one of the last elements you want to touch on before fun with the group is the commons, the, the pocket parks and the kind of greenways. We've talked a bit about it already. Um, this image at the top is an area that we see as being more of a pocket park type area behind the houses in the single family uh, pod of the development. The trail is all leading to it and can have some kind of natural uh, playscapes for kids in the neighborhood fire pit, some other chairs, just sort of a gathering place, a place to, <coughs> place to hang out. Um, within that, kind of create a gathering place in that part of the project. This is a similar but very different program we're thinking about around the, the duplex cottages and the memory care, where it's, it's really a formal common that has a landscaping, again, a place to gather, perhaps a wall, The layout as it comes, the character of it. This is a common green space um, that will be next to the, the multi family. So they're all different in design. Um, but Again, have you thought about the dog parks and any of these areas? We've talked about that. Um, we don't have an image of what that would look like, but we have a place in mind. Um, and we're we're going to fine tune that before kind of subdivision submission to figure out where that is and what the what the size and layout of that would look like. Mm -hmm. Now, Dan, that bug that you photographed there is that the uh, mm -hmm. the, the uh, apartments looking yeah. at it from the common? It is. It's from the back side, the, the opposite yeah. of the down road. Okay. Yeah. And there's silver here and a little silver here. Where there could be some. I think the appearance of those buildings were better in this context than just the standalone mm -hmm. building. So, yeah, this is the next case. Um, I've never done it before, so I'm going to do it before. Sure. So, we have a play button. There we go. So, we're starting above the Downs Road with Route 1 behind us, and we're going to enter into the local street. There's opportunity for signage here on the left. And then you can see the eight unit condos on the left. To the right, you see the memory care, or what could be memory care for non residential use. You can see sidewalks and esplanade on both sides here, and then on your left, entering into the commons on your left. We're going to turn on the local street here. These are more of the duplex cottages. We'll run through this and then we can, then we can, come, back. We can come back to it. Yeah, and pause. And just pause. So now we're going to enter through one of what I would call the trailheads, right? The yeah. sidewalk is going to lead into the commons. You can see we're focusing on alignments and we're lining up to what could be a fire feature or some gathering feature internally inside that commons. There's some walls and planting. You can see the, the walls and fencing planting all create outdoor spaces and they define these rooms. So um, even in the compact nature of this, this uh, commons, uh, you, can, you, can, you feel like you're separated and you have some private space. So we're going to continue down the walk. We're looking back here towards the eight unit condos and the downs road. We've been calling it that. <laughs> we call it that, but we want to call it Main Street. So, so we're looking back <laughs> south down the duplex cottages, and then we're going to head out through the trail. 
and we're going to hit a, uh, a section of wetland here. So we transition to boardwalk. You can see the boardwalk splits off to your left. That's an eight-unit apartment, and the rest of the 12-unit apartments through the trees. We're going to go right over the boardwalk through the wetland. You can see all the trees have grown up. <laughs> um, back to a soft surface path that meanders through. Uh, it'd be great for jogging or walking your dog. There's the first single family home on your left. This is kind of a signature element that we have talked about. Um, so this is a trail crossing over the local street. And you see we have a lane split. That becomes a traffic calming device, but also a, uh, an opportunity to, to kind of brand the neighborhood and create a theme around trails and open space. Now we're coming up to the potential natural play feature, maybe another community gathering feature. You can see the back of the single family homes with fencing in the back to, again, delineate between public and private space. Looking up to the north, that would be towards the center of the village. Then back to the right, heading up to crossing over the wetland into the second commons behind some additional single family. You can see that it feels very comfortable. Um, and again, the fencing, the trail, the planting, everything works to delineate public and private spaces. Back to, we're at, we're at the street in the single family neighborhood now. You can see a separated sidewalk, an esplanade with street trees, front porches, some landscaping against the buildings. So we're defining a comfortable, safe, open space. By design, this street would be, uh, it would be slow travel speed. So good for walking or children, kids playing in the street. Continuing down along the sidewalk, coming up to you. <laughs> but we're slowing down, so it worked. So we're going to slow at the trail crossing. And continue on to the single family. We've got a little sliver of wetland here that we're crossing. And then looking left, you see we just passed an eight unit apartment. This is the pocket park attached to the 12 unit apartments. So this pocket park is designed to create a nice threshold to the neighborhood. Get some separation from the street for the apartments. And then we're continuing back out to the Downs Road. You can see the parking for the apartments is tucked back beyond the buildings. So it's not breaking your face as you enter. And then back out to the Downs Road. We're going to go up. And you can kind of see down the, the Downs Road corridor with street tree planting and curb extensions or bowl outs. Um, side, gracious sidewalk, on street parking. You can see that planting buffer over to the right. These are the eight unit condos. See the garages behind, the duplex. And that's it. I think you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> He's okay. <cake. laughs> <laughs> ask a question. Um, I, I, I'm wondering how many, tra are you going to have, what you what your plans are in terms of um, leaving the trees off as many as possible because you know it's great to plant trees but they start off awfully small so the first five or six years um, it's not going to look as shady and nice unless you have the ability to leave some of the more mature trees there throughout the throughout the complex. Is that going to be something you're looking at or you can do or what? I, I can touch on that. I mean, within the developed area where the buildings are, there'll, there'll be virtually nothing there uh, you know, that's existing today, just simply because of the way the property's been cut over the years mm -hmm. and, and the, the closeness of, of the space we'll have to work with. So we're going to need to plant a lot. And I think you're showing this eight, ten years out. Is this about what those Oh, yeah. Are? Yeah, I was thinking about it earlier. Yeah, it's probably... 10 years. Probably 10 years out is the trees. Right. Um, I, I struggled with that a little bit, kind of kind of wanted to show them a little bit smaller so that you didn't think that that was day one. Uh, that's going to take some time. But the areas that you see behind, the wooded areas, that stuff's all going to remain. So that's all the trail, basically? The trails are going to wind their way through the areas. Yeah, right here. And those okay. wooded areas have been cut over pretty hard by the former owner uh, over the years. It's been harvested a couple of times. But there's a lot of good standing natural trees that will remain uh, in those areas. Yeah, and these images, when you went through those, um, those 
wetland areas and those wooded areas connecting the neighborhood shows that kind of spacing. You know, yeah, it, it, it um, wasn't, clearly wasn't a bunch of planted trees. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and this is along the downs road we talked about. The back That's the buffer to the enterprise. So, mm -hmm. you know, what you're seeing along the curb or along the road is the planted trees to supplement. Um, but there is a well, if, you, if you think about this image in the, in the video in general as sort of a diagram, the, you know, you could say that the conifers are what resemble kind of a white pine is more of the wetland than the existing trees, and then the, the smaller deciduous are probably planted. Can I ask if at all possible, having said that there's been fairly dense harvesting of the year, I would love to have a site walk. And I don't mean the whole site, but sense of just what is out there in terms of what the national spaces are going to look like. And um, <clears throat> eight to ten years, it's not a it's not a usual it would be that long. But um I play with a whole lot of different lists for the years. But I know I'm pleased to know that you're going to try to say that you should be able to fight it off the things really good. Well I would anticipate as part of the subdivision process and the site plan process. <clears throat> You know, the, um, this area here on the other side of the road, you know, you, you really this to be determined. Um, have you given any thought of putting, you know, one of those wood rock trails across town so it can link into, um, I call it, like, mm -hmm. um, So, uh, one of the tasks that I had given Mark Hampton actually last Friday, He's back out on site and finishing up wetlands and you know, pool and whatnot. It's find us the best location to cross. You know, permitting's going to be tricky, but we've got to cross that brook. We've got to cross Mill Brook to get there. And uh, I hadn't thought so much about tying into Juneberry as I had tied into the trail system that exists on the uh, state owned land. There's a trail system there. But this is so, state owned land here. Yes, that's all state owned land right there. That's actually not Juneberry. So here, look up. On this yeah, Rocky's talking about this property here. Oh, okay. That is owned by the state, and then there's trails that exist, I think, on the other side of the street. On the other side of the street. So we're going to try to find you know, the best place to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Those, trails, those trails come out to Sawyer. Yeah. And then, right. and then that gets you right across the street, and you're on the sidewalk, and it's Sawyer. Yeah. Off you go. Well, you can crossing when actually you need to be on the state property. Yes, I think you probably uh, there's a stream goes like this. So if we connect over here, it's going to stay stay on. Well, why does it stay on that? But it's a mitigation. What? A mitigation area for, I think it might have been, or a turf plant or a Something done in the early 90s. The new exit. The new. Yes. It was a mitigation. I, I don't anticipate a bus with no there. I think if, if 
there were children coming out of that neighborhood, probably it would be a pickup right here. Right over on the main street. Yeah, that was great. What about that slide
I'm still, it's, it's possible. I don't know that I'm ready to say yes, because I'm still not clear what's going on there. Uh, the 12 unit apartment buildings, to me, look a little out of proportion to the rest of the site. Again, not, not against them so much, but I'm still, I, I still worry about big blocks sitting there, right on the street. Uh, and that becomes, that becomes the bulk. So it, it, to me it's a question of, I don't think I have quite enough information. I've been thinking about it and I don't have any solutions except to say that um, if we say that the bulk standard as established is fine with us, but then we come back with the actual proposal and the proposal of what's going to happen with those 2,500 watts isn't acceptable to us, then we can change it because there's nothing written in concrete. Well, what the ordinance says is that you're, um, I just want to find the language, I don't want to mm -hmm. go off script here. Um, you talked about <laughs> uh, the, the space and bond standards applicable to plan developments in individual lots, uh, individual lots and buildings within approved plan developments shall be the development standards set forth in the, ma in the approved master plan for the plan development. So again, you're, you're establishing the space in bulk. So this, is, if you're comfortable, or whenever you get too comfortable, would be the approved space in bulk that goes right on the subdivision plan and gets recorded. Now, what the board will see when they come in for subdivision is you, you can dive a bit deeper into what that means, and you can start to, Vanessa, I mean, we start to talk a little bit about porches and some certain requirements that might be. But I think it is important to note there will be specific site plan approvals that get done for the multi-family buildings. So the, the bigger buildings, Rachel, I think you were expressing concerns about. You'll see that architecture right up front, every single detail. Now the single family lots, once the site plan is approved, like any other subdivision approval that has single family lots, they would run off to our code officer and say, I'm building a single family lot. So this board wouldn't necessarily see the single family lots. Um, but again, through the subdivision process, you can refine, you can make conditions of approval of what gets built on those single family lots. So Verify for me if <coughs> the bulk, the bulk standards that we can seek to after one this evening, yep. that would, would be applied just to this phase or the entire project? Just to this phase. Just you'll, to this you, phase. you'll do this again with each phase of development okay. that comes along. Correct. Uh, all right. Susan, do you have a follow-up? Yeah, I'm a little confused still as to what it is that you, you want us to do tonight. I mean, I'm willing to say that, yeah, that in concept is great, but until I actually see the specifics of what's going to go on that time, I don't know how I can do it. Well, well I, I mean, just, that, that's what you're being asked to do, um, okay. is to say at this point, yep, I think conceptually this can work. Through the, through the subdivision process, you can, as I said, you can further refine it. I think, um, I don't know, Dan, if you're going to speak to sort of these standards and how they right. fit with, them, fit with uh, other approved projects. I think, you know, we, you and I have talked a little bit in the past about they're very similar to what's in the Eastern Village um, development. Um, I think that's been crossing to a certain extent. Um, so, so this is, a, so I don't know if you are prepared to. I can talk a little bit about that, and I also can provide a bit more context. I'm going to go to the, uh, over the PowerPoint. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Let me just, talk, let me just these, these um, pictures that you have up there now, what is the front of those? Those aren't zero. No, those are. No, so ten probably to the so many okay. images of any with zero or five The only one we have that says zero is the positive. Yeah, I, these are these are probably closer to ten. I would say. So this is this is basically 
what is your plan on doing? And you just want to leave the one that has flexibility at zero. Is that what I understand? On some lots, and, and there's, you know, architecture is a piece to... of this conversation where we, if we want to work on porches, we want to work on stoops. Maybe these porches are growing towards the street. Um, you know, there's that. We, we want some flexibility to work with you to meet your goals at subdivision too. Um, I think the board's going to be looking at all this in detail uh, later on. And I was going to talk a little bit about this, but I think you Well, for instance, on the single family homes. Yeah. I mean, let's say those are back about 10 feet. Just, just for reference, it, it's kind of easy to, to think about the right of way line is probably in these images right about where the back of the sidewalk is. Yeah, the edge of the sidewalk is. Maybe, yeah, maybe just a little bit inside. Okay, alright. Yeah. So that's probably about maybe 10 feet. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would say maybe, maybe, little, maybe more like 15. But 15 yeah. feet? 10 feet. I mean, from the house to the people are. Mm -hmm. Right. So the thing is, if you're going to build a, uh, a number of homes like that, you're not going to put one right out of that side. No. You've got to kind of keep it somewhat in line with each other. But there's going to be some staff. Yeah, but I mean, it's some might have a. I think, I some think. might have a six foot porch, others might have an eight right. foot or a ten foot porch. Some might have a full length, some might have a. We don't, we don't want to park cars in the right of way. Sure. So you have to maintain at least you know 18 okay. feet, yeah. really, from the garage. But then the, but then the porch could potentially encroach a little bit. Uh, but I don't think the intent, at least in the single family, is to pull the house all the way up to within two feet of the right, right of way. I don't think that'd be but, but if we vote that you could do that, then, then you could end up doing that. In other words, you might not have the intent to do it, but if we said, sure, there's, there's zero front yard, mm -hmm. the zero minimum front yard, then, then there could be houses that end up with zero minimum front yard. Yeah, or overhangs, like the town counts roof overhangs and front steps. It's not just the wall of the house, it's what's connected to a house. Yeah. Um, and Examples in other zones in town, Eastern Village has a zero foot setback. Um, and that's a product of, again, not all the houses, but some houses want to have front steps that go right down to the, to the right of way. And in some places, the right of way, the road's not centered. Or there's a big esplanade and a sidewalk, and there's the right of way. So visually, it looks like it's set back 15 feet, but sort of legally, it's not. Yes. And that's the trickiness around um, setback from the right of way versus you know, looking at it from the curb. Um, so, can I, let, let me test a couple of assumptions because this is all new to me. Um, Rocky, are you going to be doing, I'm assuming you're going to be doing the building. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Uh, on the single family homes. Mm -hmm. We'll be involved in that, absolutely. Um, how many designs, different designs, do you anticipate having there? Oh, I'm, really the sky's the limit. I probably would have four or five typical designs. But With the different so elevations for design, so that there's a lot variation. Of, you know, we're kind of fixed on, how, you know, what size footprint we can have there, but we have some different looks, different architecture. So the, the again, it's talking about, you know, if, if we're allowed zero, setback, then we can work within this area. And, and there will be some variation as to how far these houses are set back. It won't be all in a, in a straight line. And, you know, we're working in a constant curve here as well. I'm just talking about just in the subdivision now. So, there's, you know, we're looking for some flexibility there uh, from the board to allow us to, to place these houses. And, uh, I was, one thing I was going to offer, I think one of the things I heard Dan talking a little bit about, maybe it starts to address part of your concern, maybe it doesn't, but I'm going to throw it out there anyway. Uh, when you brought up Eastern Village and how, you know, there's zero setbacks, yeah, that, there's, the, there's actually sort of very, if I recall correctly, I'm trying to pull it up now, it sort of talks about a zero setback for stoops, stairs, and what have you. But the house itself actually needs to be three, five, whatever feet. Um, and so there could be that sort of, I think, Rachel, that was part of the concern I was starting to hear is that if we say zero, that means, yep, you can put the 
house right there. Mm -hmm. um, but you could build in that sort of flexibility that says, okay, within the first 10 feet, you can have these components. The house itself needs to set back whatever. Um, okay, I mean, and that, that's helpful. I'm looking at the visual that Rocky included in here, an example project that includes, um, that includes a picture of the uh, classical lane in Eastern Village. What it actually looks like, and that was very helpful to be able to, to see that. Um, Does it, doesn't bouncing also help you? That's one of the um, uh, on examples of the. Yeah, and it's, I mean, the goal isn't to build houses uncomfortably close to the street. They need to be sailed. We want this image. Um, implemented in the field. That, that's the character of the neighborhood. So the houses aren't going to be crowded at the zero foot setback in many places. It's it's sort of anomalies or where the road wide road right of way is wider, um, locations like the down road. We anticipate a pretty wide right of way there. That's not going to be a fifty foot wide right of way. It's going to be you know sixty or more and it's going to include a lot of different infrastructure beyond the street. So you're going to have uh, a large esplanade. You're going to have a sidewalk, and we want the sidewalks for multifamilies to tie right into the front steps, so it's integrated. So, and that's stuff that you're going to see at site plan. That if you don't like it, <laughs> tying in as closely as you're seeing it under site plan review, you can say actually move that back or do this architectural treatment to address the concern. Um, so that's, that's really the intent, is to enable to bring a plan like this to you, because one of our challenges is we can't really design much more without some certainty around what the rules are. And I know it's um, kind of a double-edged sword, but that's what really Eastern Village's process was, is they were allowed to propose to the planning board what the space and bulk standard should be in order to, to deliver a certain design that was a discussion at subdivision as to, okay, that works on those lots and it doesn't work on these other lots. Excuse me, but that's perfect. That's just what I'm looking for. You know what I mean? I have no problems with saying, go, try, go for it. Try it. If it doesn't work, we'll, we'll be the first ones to know. And if you need to adjust something, again, we'll be the first ones to know. Basically, what we're saying is, I think the zero setback is really very, very good to get that straight into your mind. I really appreciate that a lot. But basically, the kinds of things that I was concerned about, um, I don't have an answer about this. This isn't the last time we're going to have to interact with this. Uh, close. If I could address the, 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 uh, the lot sizes. So, one of the, I'm going to use my pointer here. But we had talked about, and, and we've, we've come to the, to this thinking now that this is a condominium association and, and what we had talked about earlier is less important. But if you could envision a lot line between these, could be the garage wall, could actually be a lot line, it could be a zero lot line there. But actually each unit sat on its own lot. We have a plan to show that at one time. And we're just trying to keep our options open because that is done in, in many areas. Uh, probably not, not locally, but uh, that was one of the, that's kind of how we get the 2,500 square feet, I think. Uh, and we envision that these, these uh, duplex condos, actually each unit is on its own lot. That's how that could be. Okay. And as a condo, it basically means all the lot area part. It's all one lot, one lot. But it, so physically on the ground, it's the same layout. I, I don't have any problems with this, okay? Um, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, we're looking at Eastern Village as an example. I think the, the units over there are actually larger than the other. So the scale here will be much, much smaller. Mm -hmm. I, I was able to pull up the, again, this is just point of reference, or it doesn't have to necessarily follow this, but the Eastern Village does, um, it does speak to, for single families, a zero front yard setback, it has a little asterisk, and then it says, um, Zero for porches, stoops, stairs, or other building entry types increased to three feet to base of building non-entry areas. So, so that's the type of thing. So that like non-living space is allowed to encroach, basically. 
or, or 11 feet, yeah. yeah. Is that, but is, is that saying that only course. three feet are allowed for a porch width? Um, so that would, so um, again, it says it's a zero setback for a porch. For porches and stoops, it is three a, mat, uh, uh, a minimum of three feet to the face of a um, of the house. So that is potentially saying that you know you could have a, a three foot stoop, or I don't think you'd get a porch in there because you need to have stairs. Yeah, because <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so, so that would allow a good example. That would allow a row house. So you could right. have a right. where you yeah. had yeah. a set of stairs. But when they switch that to three foot, and that's porch, similar to what we right. have, which you can't the condition that we're trying to create. And so, and I think one of the things that we might, if I'm sort of hearing the board, this establishes that for townhouses, single family, for all housing types. It may be, you know, our thinking has moved, you know, this is 12 years ago, I think when these were originally established, so it may be for certain unit types, that makes sense, but for single families, maybe it's something different where we're talking about porches to your concern. Well, yeah, we, if we're talking about porches consistently, then we're going to need to talk about something more than a three foot because mm -hmm. that's basically, maybe you get a chair on there and that's about it. So it's not a, um, not conducive to creating community if you really can't use it. So, so you know, for, uh, for what it's worth, I, you know, I think um, most of, you know, most of what I see, I get that your apartments, you know, your different buildings, go with the service, except that I mean, it kind of makes sense. You know, like the entryway closest to one through the parks and the end of the building. I get that. I think where I struggle with it a little bit is on the single family side. Um, but I also understand your point that you want some flexibility with where you're working and where you can place things. And if it comes out looking anything like what we just saw, um, or close to it, you know, it's going to be a very impressive piece. Um, and I don't think anyone here wants to really handcuff you on the work that you're trying to do. So do I believe that there's some sort of language that could be incorporated that allows you that flexibility and kind of gives us that peace of mind that we can get to a point at the next, the next phase, um, if there is something that we don't see, or even write it in that, you know, maybe we're more stringent but allow them to request a waiver um, of certain parcels. Um, Sort of where, where the where the land doesn't allow for an alternative. Correct. Like so, but I, I feel like there's probably some language here. But I feel like in general, some of the most of the board is comfortable. I just feel like it's probably yeah, a, a working out the language. I think it is a language thing. I think we're in agreement, but it's um, a language thing. I do I have one other thing, though, and that's um, the maximum building height. And you've got a six-story building. Are those apartments that you would be building be six stories that we would be seeing? No, you see a three store. We show them a three store. So why are you asking for six? That's the building height allowed in the district. So there's there's certain zoning standards that already exist um, that you can change um, throughout the whole zoning district. And those include the maximum building coverage of 75 percent, the maximum building height of six stories or 75 feet. Um, or I don't know if there's other ones, but those are the two that, for the density, the maximum density of 20 units per acre. Um, so you're not proposing a six story building anywhere in here, nor do you intend to build one? No, we're we, not. Okay. We filled no, in the beach. Yeah. yeah, we filled in the other space in bulk that we're charged to work with you on establishing. Um, so there's these base, base, base in bulk requirements that, that we can't change. Just up to yeah. Is this, is, this the, uh, is this where it has to be consistent throughout the whole development? Mm -hmm. Whatever. You're talking about across the whole 500 acres? Yeah. No, this is only for this pot of days of development, pot of days, whatever we're calling them. Uh, when we deal with the next phase of development, we'll start this conversation over. Okay. So it's maybe the same quite quite the height. Height. Except for these yeah. height stays throughout. Oh, right. I'm not asking to change that. That's in the base zone. So, so the zoning, the zone, the zoning district, as has already been stated, but I'll just sort of echo under uh, so section D, space and bulk regulations in the crossroad plan development district. Under E2, plan developments. This is where I read earlier about the space and bulk standards applicable to plan developments in individual lots and buildings within the approved development shall be 
the development standards set forth in the approved master plan, subject to the following limits. It gets into maximum net residential density, I think Dan just talked about 20 units per acre. Maximum building height is the same language that's in there, the six stories or 35 feet. And the maximum impervious uh, surface ratio, 75 feet. And then the setbacks from uh, adjacent zoning districts. Those are the four that the town said, thou shalt. The others, the setbacks and the frontages and those type of elements, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a blank, blank canvas, so to speak. And then, <coughs> thank you. Um, does Roger or Susan or Rachel, do, does anyone have any follow-up questions? I made a list, but I'm not sure. No, I, I would be very confused, but I kind of look at the records and I see them. I, I think we should just sign that video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Build that? Yes. Whatever that zoning is. Uh, whatever that zoning is. Make it look like that. It <laughs> meet all the other standards. That's right. <laughs> so I had just a couple of notes, and, and perhaps it's been resolved um, since the submission. Um, verbiage around the alleyways and public acts. Public yep, so staff previously had a comment to that end, and I think Jamel will look to you, but I recall we talked about that and we were comfortable with the way they addressed that at this point. Um, All right, and then I have page six. Um, could you elaborate a little bit more on the Enterprise drive connection for me. There's a response on uh, the four way intersection versus the you, know, you, you kind of went over it a little bit. What was, you set it off by 150 feet, you said, and that was just, you didn't so, want to align the development with that intersection? Was that the. That, it, that's it really, the it came down to the, to the site layout within yeah. the multifamily, okay. and we felt that, and we looked at it hundred different ways of trying to get, get that alignment and um, working with the multifamily. And we felt that ultimately it it made it feel like you were driving through, you'd have to drive through parking or drive through or split the multifamily. Um, and we, so we felt like consolidating the road to one side allowed that to, allow the multifamily to kind of be its own neighborhood. It would be more walkable and not across the street or something like you were okay. I just want yeah. to just yep. check. Okay. Okay. So because the, the previous version that, that had it aligned or were we asking for them to align? It was a request by staff for so a question. We had, we had questioned it um, and I think what we put in our memo at this point, the board was comfortable it seemed like the applicant made like was just said, a reasonable <laughs> right. uh, uh, rationale for it. Certainly it will need to be looked at by traffic engineers through the subdivision process, and if they say this is a public safety issue, we can revisit it. But at this point, it seems reasonable and logical, based, at least to staff, and hopefully if the board agrees, then you know, we think it, it sort of meets the consistency uh, standard. And like all these elements, that you know, we have to go through the, the next step is going to be that sort of more rigid Review, but it seems to meet the face straight face straight face test to staff at this point. So, yeah, yeah. I hear Mark having another connection. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, I noted here that there's a waiver request on the 40 foot aisle width on some of your roads. And those roads are going to be limited to 44. Is it limited just to the condos, or is that? Applies up to single family and condo. That was, yeah, that was more just for the single family rather than the, the main down. In the main, you had at 60? Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah there is, I think there is 44, but right away in the condos. I think we, I think we need it there. Uh, and there is, I think, portions of. If it finishes out, if we actually develop it out as a car, then we'll technically... Oh, there is, yeah, that's right, so, yeah. It depends on how that phase finishes out, if, if it actually is a car. Technically, if it's a private drive, there's no, it's, there's a, there is no right way. Okay. Then, for reference, I mean, Eastern Village is... 
towns. Okay. And just again for point of reference, I, I think that would be another element that sort of we get into if, if the board if that 44 design comes in, the board says, well, things aren't fitting here, or no way are we going to take that as a public road. If, right. Indeed, that was what was being proposed. Right. That that conversation is not over. <laughs> right. Uh, I just wanted to check make sure yeah. it wasn't the the main drag. Mm -hmm. um, there was a note in here from staff about the front entrance, and I, I think I, this is probably just a question in general on the construction side. I can see the benefits of doing it both ways or not doing it either way, but whether or not that front entrance way is kind of prepped to kind of a showcase finish. I can see you guys. Off of one. Off of one. Oh, okay. yeah, sorry about that. Uh, I can see the benefit of that being kind of a tractor piece, but I can also see the detriment of driving construction trucks through it for 10 years while you develop the place. So, I, I mean, are you at this time saying you prefer to wait to develop that that finished front entrance? So I think as part of phase one, there's definitely a unification process that's going to happen right now at, at the end of this one. I think over time, that light system out there is probably going to evolve and changes will be will be made, not as part of phase one, other than some unification. Okay. It certainly needs that. Mm -hmm. We would envision that we would be doing that as part of our phase one approval. Uh, what that means, I'm not sure, but we have a good team and we'll figure it out. But I do think as the downs develops, maybe in the future phases, I think that light system is you know, the sort of changes that will have to be All right. Yeah. And the hydrology investigation waiver, and that's just because you need a little extra time to get that underway. That's yeah, it's currently underway, okay. and we're going to look at that during the detailed site plan okay. process. I think that's it for my list. Uh, right. I'm just in the uh, staff notes we talked about your interest in uh, developing a connection to the enterprise business five for itself. Is that basically you have to do that? It's a sewer connection, a potential sewer connection only. Oh, that's, that's, not a, that's not a new road or sidewalk or anything in that location. It's a, I think our staff comment was about the road connection. Right. Right. So that existing right away mm -hmm. connection. So that was the intersection we were just talking about. Uh, no, it was, I'm just I, reading this here. Yeah. Under which? The applicant is proposing to create a pedestrian connection to Enterprise Drive at this location, which I, I, I took that to mean opportunity. While well, providing the vehicular connection for the south and the starboard down road. So I took, I the right way I read that. Is this, that's why I asked the question earlier, so we went out here to kind of cross it. And I thought you were going to throw the connection down here, so but you're not. No. But it's just the one connection of the. Yeah. Okay. I think that's what we were, that's what we meant. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> one um, observation, I guess, and, and that's simply that um, with that on-street parking along the downs, uh, I would assume that the cars that were parked there would be subject to removal in a snow, in a snow emergency. So where would, where the, where would you end up directing cars that are parked along there during the snow event? That's a question that we're not fully prepared to answer tonight. <laughs> um, well, it's, it's an observation. It's something it, it that's is an observation. We actually, we talked about it, Bill and I, especially because um, snow is, is big in our world. So um, we, we're going to look real closely at our parking. We're going to do a, an analysis of all of our apartments right now that we, that we currently own in this town and other towns. I think on the multifamily, 1.5 spaces per unit works. We've geared towards 1.75. So maybe, you know, maybe some of our overflow is the on street and maybe somebody uses it regularly, but there's probably enough room for another park with it. Um, I also think we do have a spot. We talked a little bit about this corner up here. There's some developable land that I think could tie in with uh, 
maybe some parking, satellite parking. I think that's where our package drop probably goes, as well as a dog park up in here. So I, I think we could have adequate parking uh, within and not totally count on the on-street parking. And, and the concomitant question is snow removal. With, with this sort of a density, there's not a lot of places to put the snow. That's but correct. You're going to have to consider that. We, we could probably prohibit snow from falling. We could try. <laughs>